I, I think for many young people, uh, for majority of them, they don't want to end their lives. They want to end their pain. And they really believe some that somehow this act of suicide will end their pain forever. The truth is different. The truth is that um, it doesn't end pain, it, it multiplies the pain and it passes it on. So in a sense, I'm handing over my pain but I'm multiplying it by a hundred and I leave it with my family, with my friends, with my community. And none of us know what happens after death, so maybe the pain goes with us, we don't know that, but you know, we, the idea that it just ends the pain, I don't think it's true. The pain is still there. It's there in the living and it's uh, very hard for people to recover from that pain. And it can last for years, years and years. I've seen it, l l you know, I've seen young people whose sibling maybe c took their lives and, and living with that pain for years years and years in their bodies you know and I think just l let's get real about it you know it doesn't end it just gets passed on. Are you going to the funeral? Of course yes are you? Actually in about half 50% of cases particularly youth suicide it's an impulsive act and even an hour before they mightn't have been thinking about it. Um, we know this for people who have you know attempted suicide and survived and they've talked about it as something that just hit them in the moment or hit them within that hour and they just acted on it. He's gonna regret this. How can you regret something when you're dead? He's not coming back. And also they didn't have any appreciation of the finality of it, you know. Um, suicide is a permanent solution to a temporary problem, you know, and they don't, they see it as a, as a kind of a solution, uh, but not a permanent one. You know, they'll wake up and it'll be all over and all done and the pain will be gone, they'll start again. Um, it, it feels like turning off computer or rebooting it or pressing the restart button, but actually it's it's kind of like throwing the computer out the window, you know, it's never going to work again. Um, and that's sad. All our lives are tremendously interdependent. We are all so interconnected and interdependent. We might think we're, we're going it alone and doing it my way, but actually we're very affected by what each other do, you know. And if I'm a young person in a community where there are other young people and some of those young people, um, you know, become successful, well, I start to feel I could become successful. Or if they become rock stars, I start to take up the guitar. If they become football stars, hey, I'm on the pitch playing soccer and I'm that guy, you know, because I've been affected by what he or she has done. Um, and similarly with suicide, if somebody, I hear about that, and again, Amy just heard about the guy, she barely brushed she shoulders with him, and then she heard that he'd taken his life, and, and that played on her, and she thought, well, maybe I could do that too, um, if I felt bad. Um, and if you can imagine that happening, not just once, but a hundred or a thousand times across a whole community, it's quite conceivable that one or two people might say well let's go to the next level you know and that's I think what happens um, it's almost as though for one person to do something in a community gives permission for somebody else to do it it's not that that person means to do that or wants to do it or you know it's not at all what's going on if somebody becomes a great soccer star they're not telling all the kids back home they should be soccer stars it's just the message the young person gets is that this could be me, you know, and then that can give them either encouragement to go that route or a, even a curiosity to, to kind of experiment with that and, and that can lead to unhappy endings for many. Amy and Dylan felt terrible in, in moments and yet this film helps us to understand the history to that. In your life, if you're feeling bad, there is history to this. There's a reason that this is there. And so the first thing is to kind of honor your feelings and say, okay, I'm feeling pretty crap, really crap. I could be very lonely with this. Um, but what I learn listening to young people who really explore those feelings is that there's nothing wrong with them. There's a reason they're feeling that way. Number two, I would say, give it some time, okay? The biggest gift you can give to yourself when you're give, feeling really bad is time. Just give yourself time because if you give time, these feelings will change. And often they just need you to be patient. 
you know, and the time could be a few minutes, could be a few seconds, could be a few hours or a few days, but you've got to give yourself a little bit of time. And then the third thing is, you know, as you begin to kind of come home to yourself and feel a bit more in your body and just kind of like, okay, I'm having a rough time, it's not easy, there's something going on with me, I don't quite understand it. You know what, if I could talk to someone, it might help. Uh, that person could be a close friend, but it could also be some adult in your life that you feel safe with. In the movie, Amy had an adult that she could talk to eventually. Her dad, but also her mom's friend who helped her with the nails. Um, so ask yourself, who in my life do I feel safe enough with? Who, who I trust? Who maybe I think won't judge me? And will just listen and kind of say, okay, I hear you. I hear you, and this is tough, and we're going to get through this. What I love about this film is that, in a funny way, it's not about suicide. It's actually about the experiences of young people that can lead them, take them to that edge. But the film is really about all the things that lead them there. It's a film about, you know, feeling loss. You know, of someone you love, it's a feeling, it's, it's, it's feeling isolated, feeling alone, feeling like you're living in a parallel world and the world out there is not the world you're living in because the world you're living in, you feel your crap and you feel alone and you feel in pain. These are the real experiences that I think we all have in our lives in different ways. If we talk about them, we learn to work with them and, and therefore rather than act on them. You know, and, and I think that's the key, is it's, it's working with them. I think they feel uh, sometimes unworkable, but when you talk about them, you begin to see, actually, you know what? I kind of get why I feel this way, but I just want change in my life. And I feel a bit trapped. And I think suicide is the only way out, but actually, there might be another way out. You know, nobody's asking me to live inside this painful place. They're just saying, hey, could we find another way out? Amy. Yeah. You all right, love? Yeah, I'm glad. Do you need that? No. It's a message to all of us, you know, that no matter what is happening in our lives, you know, that we, we should find the courage, uh, alone or together, uh, to look at what we're troubled about, okay? So it's, it's kind of saying to all of us, look, don't be running from things, the issues that frighten you. Look at them. I've never done that. I've never just before my life. And as you look at them, you begin to see that there's different ways of looking at them and you begin to understand them and you begin to see patterns and as you see those patterns you begin to be able to change those patterns and I think so it's it's for me it's a kind of community's meditation on the pain of young people it's not about the, the dead it's about the living and and what's happening and as we understand we can begin to shift a little bit even by just paying a little bit more attention or just being available in that one moment that we might have with a young person. We get one shot sometimes just to hear them and to connect with them. Young people are often trying to tell us about their lives and we're not listening. This community listened and uh, they, they made something beautiful uh, through this film. Uh, as I say, to me it's like the old Greek tragedies, the, where the community put on a play to show the things that were hurting so that they could understand them. It's, it's a meditation on, on, on life and death.